Hello there, this Alchemist chemistry video is going to focus on the separation technique known as chromatography. I'm going to include an explanation of the process itself along with how to calculate an RF value. So chromatography is a process designed to separate coloured substances into their constituent pigments based upon those pigments relative solubility within a selected suitable solvent. So essentially the process works based upon the solubility of different pigments in a selected solvent. That solvent could be water, if the pigments happen to be soluble in water, or possibly alcohol, if they are not soluble in water, but maybe alcohol is a better medium to dissolve those pigments. This diagram represents a basic paper chromatography experiment, and it's reasonably simple to understand. Firstly, we have the chromatography paper itself, which is known as the stationary phase. It's designed to absorb and soak up the solvent itself and allow that solvent to travel upwards over time. Secondly, we have the solvent itself. The solvent is known as the mobile phase. That's because it is the substance that will travel up the stationary phase over time. Thirdly, you'll note there is a pencil line at the top of the chromatography paper. This is known as the solvent front and it records the maximum distance traveled by the solvent during the course of the experiment itself. Finally, a pencil line is drawn on the paper just above the height of the solvent itself, onto which the colored substances, which are usually dyes, are blotted, ready to be separated into their constituent pigments as the solvent travels up the chromatography paper. You may be asking yourself, why use pencil to draw these lines? The reason we use pencil to draw the bottom and top line is because pencil is insoluble in the solvents selected and therefore won't run and interfere with the experiment itself. Sometimes a lid can be used in paper chromatography experiments, usually for those involving the use of a volatile solvent such as an alcohol, and it's there to help prevent and stop that volatile alcohol from evaporating too early and preventing the chromatography experiment going to completion. Right guys, let's get into the practical itself. Hopefully we can see from this particular diagram is that as the solvent travels up the chromatography paper, different colored pigments travel different distances based upon their solubility in the particular solvent. And the key idea here is that the more soluble pigment will travel a greater distance up the chromatography paper or the chromatogram. So let's take the red dye as our example. It would appear that the orange pigment has traveled a shorter distance than the yellow pigment. And therefore the orange pigment is less soluble in the solvent than the yellow pigment from this red dye. Now, no doubt you'll also have noticed that for the blue and green dye, they both seem to have the same pigment, this uh, green pigment in them and for the green and red dyes, they seem to both have this yellow pigment. Uh, and that's really important. Pigments at the same height have similar solubilities. If they also have the same color, they are likely to be the same pigment. In reality, sometimes it can be hard to tell if two pigments are actually at the same height, as they can get quite smudgy. Say for example, my two yellow pigments here were actually quite smudged and spread out on the page. It could be hard to determine and distinguish if they were exactly at the same height. So a retention factor can be calculated to give a numerical value that can be compared to help with this. If two substances have the same RF value, then they are likely to be the same pigment. The RF value is calculated by taking the distance traveled by the pigment measured to its halfway point, dividing this by the distance traveled by the solvent, i.e. to the solvent front. Now, because one number is always bigger than the other, retention factors will always give you a number lower than one as the answer. Let's have a look at the light blue spot as an example of how to calculate an RF value. What you would do is you would take a ruler and pencil and you would measure the distance from the bottom pencil line to the halfway point of the pigment spot itself and record that 
distance in millimeters. For this particular example, that would be 74 millimeters. You then use your pencil and ruler to measure from the bottom pencil line all the way up to the pencil line drawn for the solvent front, i.e. the maximum distance traveled by the solvent. And again, you record that distance in millimeters. And for this example, it was 135 milliliters. Then to calculate the RF value, all you do is you divide that distance traveled by the pigment, 74 millimeters in this particular example, divided by the distance traveled by the solvent itself, 135 millimeters in this example. And that would give us a numerical value for the retention factor or error, RF value of 0.55. If another pigment spot had the same RF value and had the same color, it would be highly likely that it was indeed the same pigment. So that about wraps up this summary of chromatography. I hope it was helpful and I hope it helps your understanding of this um, separation technique in the future. Um, thank you for watching and um, don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our newest content. Thank you.